Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are uh, rejoining our uh, Mercury flyby mission. It is going to make a uh, small adjustment to its course on its approach to Mercury. It's still about nine days away from this, but we're going to go from this telemetry to this here. Uh, I just have it zoomed in so that I can... Uh, I was just going to use our CS thrusters for this. And I'm going to do it uh, 12 hours ahead of time. It might save us a tenth of a meter per second or something like that on our Delta V. But uh, the objective here is uh, to fly uh, straight across Mercury's South Pole, or at least uh, somewhat close to it. Last time we flew over the North Pole, we got some decent mapping data there. And uh, now we're going to go for the South Pole, because, you know, why not? We're just going to... The aim here is to just keep flying by Mercury over and over and over and over again. Because uh, I guess that's the best I can do with this craft. Uh, 15.75... Ooh, 7,000. Yep. I don't know how high Mercury's uh, surface features are. I'm going to assume that's a bit uh, dangerous. 14. 14 kilometers. That's what we're going to go with. So let's just go ahead and lock this tank so the RCS doesn't screw us up. We really shouldn't have to make uh, any more adjustments. Yeah, it saved us uh, 0.3 meters per second. This node is nothing. I, I set that up, seeing if I could get a uh, if I could make a maneuver there to get another flyby, but uh, to no avail. Oh well. Oh yeah, I locked the tank, so we're not going to get a readout on our delta v. But we've probably got uh, well over two and a half kilometers per second left just here in this stage. So any adjustments we need to make to keep uh, looping past Mercury over and over again will be gladly taken. Um, so it's been like a, a month in Kerbal Space Program time since uh, the last video, and it has been a very, very rough month for me. Uh, I've been doing lots of very meaningless radio in contracts and flyby, or not flyby, radio stuff in, sounding rockets. Uh, a few of the uh, X planes, uh, both suborbital and uh, speed or supersonic contracts which, you know, I, I've got a little footage of, I guess I can show that to you. But my question here was, is do you guys want to see me doing some of this, what I consider uh, menial, tedious things? Or would you just like me to do that in the background and then carry on with the program as intended? Because uh, I can do either. Um, I thought people might be bored doing, like, entry-level space program stuff now that we're in, like, episode almost 230. But uh, if, if you guys want to see that, if you want to see some planes or some X-planes contracts or some, God help you, sounding rocket contracts, then I'd be more than happy to record those and post them as episodes. I, I just don't want to bore you guys with kind of this really tedious, silly things that I've been doing trying to resuscitate our reputation and get some money pumped back into this program so I can get back on what I thought was a pretty solid track for Mars and doing some other things. So... Let me know in the comments below um, what you would prefer. Carry on or show some of the other stuff. Uh, I mean, I think it's kind of tedious and mundane, but I'm doing it anyway, so it's no sweat off of my back if uh, that's what you guys want to see. I'm happy to oblige. Uh, I don't know why we're throttling back time warp. What are we doing here, MechJib? Okay, well, I, I guess we're not getting... A, uh, an indicator on that. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, we've got about nine days until we uh, hit Mercury's SOI. Um, I will probably wait until then to set up the flight computer to do all of our radio in. Oh, that's nice to know. Our pad has been reconditioned from our last sounding rocket. That's fantastic. All right, so we'll just uh, go ahead and try to speed through this a little bit. All right. Oh, we are coming up real fast. It's kind of weird watching that offset plane thing happen. Probably aren't going to spend a whole lot of time in Mercury's SOI, so I'm just going to jump out of time warp here and take a look at things. Uh, yeah, we'll be there in 44 minutes. We'll be there in 2 hours and 34 minutes and 8 seconds or something like that. So I'm going to try to 
uh, set up some timing to get some science things. Is this... Um, no, we're going to have to start that multispectral scan. All right, uh, Kerbal alarm clock. I can put you away, and let's bust out flight computer. Awesome, here we go. Uh, first, we'll set that delay to zero. Thank you very much. I already forgot all of my numbers. You're moving at 65 kilometers a second, I just noticed. 44 minutes. I can probably just set it to 45. That's going to be our initial science relay. So in 45 minutes, let's uh, start the multispectral scan and log imaging data. I don't think this is biome specific, but uh, we will find out, won't we? Let's go ahead and run the full complement. That is our, no, we do have this set up here. Log. Symmetry. All right, and back set back down to zero and see how accurately I can make this. All right, in two hours, 32 minutes. Yeah, we'll just say uh, 15 seconds. I'm sure we'll be low during that time frame. Uh, radiance scan doesn't do anything. I already, I don't even know what I've done anymore. We run it twice, we run it twice. <laughs> took so we hit it twice we hit it twice okay that's all set up quick save in case ksp does okay. there we go all right uh, i also went through and deleted a whole bunch of uh, orbital debris something i'd not done since the space station uh disappointment a while back when i got uh, screwed over on that contract got it and uh, deleted a bunch of spacecraft that really served no purpose anymore. Things that might have been in orbit of the moon or some other things that were not really doing us any favors and had no more science to radio in, but we're just kind of choking up memory. Uh, I have eliminated a lot of things from orbit. So hopefully this game's going to be running a lot smoother now and not crashing on me every 25 minutes like it used to. All right, uh, Mercury's Lowlands, which apparently we have gotten all the science from already. Yep. And bummer. Oh well. Very close to the sun. Oh yeah, and I took a contract because one was finally available to radio science in from Mercury. Oh, so I should have just radioed something back. Uh, yeah. And I'll radio one of these things in in case we don't get anything good. Dang, contract complete. Woo, yay. This one was, uh, paid us out 21 grand. It, I mean, it's kind of a drop in the bucket kind of thing, but every little bit helps at this point. Right? Yes, insufficient avionics. Periapsis is 17 kilometers. That's not too bad. Fairly certain we're not going to run into anything. Oh well, a Mercury impactor is not terrible, right? I just want to see if we are scanning yet. We are way too high to start a, a get a quick scan, but let's. Yeah, we do have a little mapping data. Yay! <laughs> that was from our last flyby. I wonder what we're going to get this time. <laughs> this should be interesting to see. Lowlands, altitude too high. 
yeah, multispectral scanner is operational. No connection. That's interesting. I guess we are being blocked. Deal. Three minutes to our periapsis. We should be low enough to get scan data by now. Just the one that has to be uber, uber low. Yeah. Well, scan set altitude is ideal. So we are getting some scan data. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, 300 kilometers is its uh, operational altitude. So as long as we can get below that, we'll be just fine. All right. We are 1 minute 4 seconds from periapsis and 1 minute 14 seconds from our next batch of radio in. Oh, man, we are going to get really... Mercury is pretty flat, right? It really looks like we're going to just barely skim past it. Have I gotten too ballsy for my britches here? Now, there, there aren't going to be any surface features that are 17 kilometers high. That's like higher than Mount Everest. We're fine. It just looks scary. Twenty-one kilometers. Scan set band is very much narrowing, and there's our periapsis, nice and close on the cold, dark side here of Mercury. Look at how narrow that band got. That's amazing, awesome, and we're getting some quality science now. Forty-five science. We'll keep that. That we have to keep them because we're uh, we don't have contact currently. Like, we got one quality science thing. I should have remembered what it was. Not. Oh. I, I don't know which is prettier. This. Something there with the glare of the sun in it. I'll take pictures of both. Why not? <laughs> Look at the scan set data. It comes down to like a millimeter. And we're getting ready to be out of range. Might just get a, a couple more kilometers of the surface mapped. Yep. And there we go. Out of range and we have a connection again. Polar craters. It says altitude ideal, so I guess as long as we're getting data back from it, we're going to leave that on. I really wonder which device had it. Uh... I guess it's going to be whichever one says, uh... Uh, what's it called? It won't be log, it'll be like a uh... uh, review. Review petroversion data. Ah, uh, I forgot to take the timer out. Oh. All right, come on. There we go. Ah, uh, the command has already been sent, so now we just have to wait for it. And we can uh, stop the multispectral scan. Bad. 3.1% in two passes. Yeah, more than... A little more than one and a half percent per flyby. So we've got a, a whole lot more of these to do if we're going to actually map something in the most inefficient way possible. We will just uh, say goodbye to Dear Mercury there. Awkward camera changes. See you again real soon there, little buddy. And finally, our multispectral scan has shut itself off. Not like we really need to conserve power this close to the sun. One of these solar panels would probably run this whole thing without too much uh, problem at all. Bye, little buddy. Relative speed's only 17 kilometers per second. 
All right, and we're coming up on our radio in for our one pass, 45 science, transmitting, 39 science added, because some of it will go into our reputation. Fantastic. All right, well, uh, I guess I'm going to be extra nice and leave you guys with uh, some clips of things that I've been building and whatnot, because I think that stuff's interesting. I love seeing build videos. I don't know about the rest. But uh, otherwise, this episode would be entirely too short. But, um, I don't know, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Uh, uh, enjoy. I'm going to do some of these uh, X-Plane contracts. And I wanted to have something that I'd be able to do both uh, speed runs and um, their altitude records. So this is uh, kind of what I came up with. The uh, Mighty J58 from the SR-71 and a pair of uh, XR-99 engines from the uh, X-15. I'm just trying to get some of the uh, wing surface things figured out, which is always the worst part of ever building an airplane when you're trying to use uh, FAR. Making sure the balance is okay, getting these landing gears set up and hopefully angled correctly, and then uh, maybe taking it outside for a little test run. Well, and those FAR numbers reflect that. So we'll make some quick changes to the surface uh, control surfaces and then uh, take it outside again. And this one actually goes a little bit better, although honestly, I'm not exactly happy with this. I don't know if I'll be using it, but you know, it was worth a shot. Great. But moving swiftly along uh, into the sounding rocket territory. Would you believe you can put something like this into space for less than uh, two grand? That's all that matters. But uh, that's going to do it for us today, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it. And I'll see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.